Hey guys, what's up? Um, Mechanical Mike here. I am on the road working. I am currently in Boise, Idaho. Um, and my CV axle broke as I was pulling into the parking lot here. So here I am at a rock concert in the middle of the parking lot, changing out my CV axle. Fortunately, there was an O'Reilly's just down the block and they had one in stock. So I'm gonna show you just a basic breakdown of how to change this out while I'm at it. Okay, so tools you need, of course, are your jack and then your tool to remove your lug nuts, which should come with your car. Uh, in this case, that's a 19 millimeter. So if you don't have that, a 19 millimeter socket will work. I have this tiny little toolbox. I take it everywhere with me and it actually has saved me a number of times. It's got just the basics. I've got a set of deep socket standard and a set of metric sockets. And I've just got a couple screwdrivers, Phillips, a flathead, breaker bar, ratchet. And that has helped me with just about everything I've needed to do. So you'll pull off your lug nuts, pull off your wheel, and then the next you're gonna pull off your whole brake caliper setup. I had just this piece of wire in my car. I, you know, you can find stuff on the ground. And I use that to tie it up and hold it out of the way. There are two bolts on, on your brake caliper that are holding this bracket in place. You don't have to remove those. I just took these off, which are holding the whole assembly. And those go in the back right here. Boom, and right there. So that was a 17 millimeter, and that fit on there. I do have this extension that I keep in there, and that comes in handy too. So if I had to reach past that, the socket, that did help for sure. So I pulled out those two bolts, set them aside. Boom, right there. And then the next thing I did was, I did have to pick up this big ass socket at O'Reilly's that was a one and one quarter inch and that's to pull off the axle nut and there is a little tab on there that where this groove is they, they just tapped it in so that the axle nut doesn't move so I just use a flathead screwdriver to pry that tab up so that I could unscrew it so this will spin and the way I held this on a pipe on the ground. Of course, I didn't take this off yet. This was still up like that. So it would have held it like that. Just slide this pipe over it so you get leverage. And that allowed me to hold it in place while I use this breaker bar on the socket to turn this and break it loose. And then you could just unscrew it by hand. So you popped off the caliper pop off the axle nut and then these two on here these were also 19 millimeter and it's just these two so I had a 19 millimeter socket and just a crescent wrench will work on the other side and you pop those off and then it, once you get that nut off it just slides out this side and then back there it's the hard part you'll think that it's not gonna come out it's really hard to get out of there I was actually able to use this handy for a lot of things. This little piece of flat and between there and the middle and you just have to push in and give a little bit of force and it'll pop out. It's just got a ring in there that holds it in place uh, right there. So that's just a little tension ring that keeps it from popping out unless you put enough force going outward on it and then it pops out of place and then it should just slide out. So it actually comes out pretty easily. And then uh, just the reverse to put it back in. Okay, so my axle actually broke in two places, right there and right there. And that just, all the bearings fell out. But before I put it back in, you definitely want to compare the two to make sure you're replacing the right part. This is where it was, it slid off. So if I hold those next to each other, that's actually where it was, but this popped loose. So it is the right part. The spindles are the same. There's my new pin. So uh, we're looking good and I'm just gonna slide that right in. Okay, something I did wanna note is that a jack stand's ideal, but this is what I could find in the parking lot. I set my hammer on top of it just so I had a little more clearance of this drop to there. Not ideal, but if you can find anything to uh, take up that distance, so if you're climbing under here, the car isn't gonna, if the jack fails, it's not gonna fall on you. Okay, uh, pardon the music. There's a band playing in the background. I'm backstage right now. Um, I got it all put back together. There's the unit back there. 
there and it's coming down. Okay, put that side in first. And then this one, you just kind of have to take this end of the axle and, oh, I'm sorry, that end, and bend it a little like that so that you can go, when this uh, rotor is leaned out, you can push it back through. And then it, there's lines in here that it lines up with, and once it comes through, you push this back up, just screw that on, put these two bolts on. Uh, keep in mind the one on top is longer than the one on the bottom, so make sure you have that placement correct. And then put this back on. And this was harder to do because I took the whole thing off together. You can take this part off and then take that off. It might make it easier for you. If I wanted to do this correctly, I would have bled these brakes when I put it back on and compressed the caliper so I could have put it on. But I had to use a hammer and kind of tap it on since I don't have the methods to bleed that. So that's it, I got it put back together. You got this one little last tab. I'm gonna take this screwdriver. And then um, right there, just like that, I'm gonna tap it so that it creates an indent and it locks this nut and keeps it from spinning out while you're driving. So that's important to make sure you do that one last step. Then I'll put the wheel back on, torque it down, and uh, let down the jack.